स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so good morning we are going to look at uh, how the academy makes up its mind the uh, brief historical overview and then we are going to focus on a 1989 movie called my left foot which was uh, um, an irish movie uh, directed by jim sheraton and uh, starring daniel de lewis who won his oscar for the best actor in the movie so um the oscars weren't called the oscars in the beginning they were called the academy awards even today they are known as the academy awards but more popularly they are called the oscars how did they get the name oscars now there are several legends and several versions about uh, the uh, nomenclature of the oscars one is um, that uh, a leading film journalist he felt that uh, the word academy award is too heavy too serious and it intimidates people so he just turned around and looked at the statuette the oscar statuette and he said um, so how are you mr oscar he said give it a more human touch and less make it less intimidating so that was the story that's one version second version is uh, uh, the great movie star betty davis who was uh, one of the finest female actors of her time and um, she named it the oscars because uh, uh, she had someone very close uh, close to her who was called oscars and oscar and therefore she th thought that it's better it's a more fitting more appropriate name so there are several versions of the name how the oscars got the names but popularly uh, they are called the oscars but um, academically they are still known as the academy awards um is there a politics yes yeah, so this is what we are going to discuss today the key concept would be politics of awards see this is always a very interesting area to discuss awards too have politics of course awards are based on uh, merit basis no doubt about it but then there is a strong undercurrent of politics and that has always been the case uh, for any major award uh, particularly so for the oscars so oscars are not always entirely about artistic merits this is important to remember the studios and we have already seen who are the major players in this after all the oscars were developed by which studio any guesses good mgm the uh, studio executive louis mayer he wanted to uh, position the film industry in a more you know hard hitting way in a more aggressive way and therefore the idea of introducing an award which will bring lot of attention to the film industry also to the mgm now so it was not purely altruistic me, uh, reasons that they instituted the awards it also uh is interesting to note that uh, people who were the uh, beneficiaries especially during the inception years of the oscars uh, they all belong to the mgm studio something interesting so if you want an oscar go work with the mgm that was the idea but, but soon things changed of course uh, so the studios uh, play uh, an, a major part or an, an important part in positioning is product and what's part of this so called positioning um full throttle publicity making the product visibility you have seen it in recent years with lagan okay how was lagan positioned uh, it is a task to make each and every academy voter watch the movie okay you can always send them the dvd earlier times it used to be the uh, the video cassette even uh, before that they would have a special screening of the movies for the voters but then things became more and more complex more and more complicated so it was 
uh, felt that it is no longer feasible to organize a screening for so many people. So, then people started pushing their products more aggressively and uh, particularly Lagan, uh, the producers approached each and every academy member, the voting members and asked them to uh, you know watch the movie, gifted them with the DVD, the video cassette of the film and ensured that at least the movie got the right kind of visibility and it paid off because it did get a nomination. Okay. And which movie won the best picture award that year? Uh, exactly, the best foreign picture award, uh, uh, pitted against Malagan. No Man's Land, okay. and it is a war movie and you all understand the importance of a war movie as opposed to uh, a movie from India, which is full of colorful songs and dances and is about cricket. Okay. So, uh, there is a politics. Okay. Uh, um, in, uh, no Man's Land dealt with a very topical theme, which is important to the western world. India's colonialism, okay, peppered that idea of India's colonialism peppered with songs and dances and beautiful items, it may not have been such a big draw with the academy, because the academy voters, the members also, they have uh, some kind of a conditioning for what for uh, you know, we are all, it is all very subjective. We like someone, we do not, you know, it is a canon. Again, let us talk about the canon. So, we sometimes we like some people, sometimes we do not like some people. Okay. Sometimes we like a theme, sometimes we do not like a theme. Okay. So, uh, there are certain popular themes which always work well, and that is what we are going to look at. What makes the cut with the academy members? So, a visibility, high campaign and PR that is public relations play major roles in making the products visible. And above all, why, why do all this? Oscars always spell big money. Even a small movie, uh, if it gets even a minor award, by minor award I mean the ma we know the top five awards, best actor, female actor, male actor, best picture, director, best movie. So, those are the major awards, but even if it gets a technical award, you know, editing, sound, etcetera, it pushes the movie into the limelight and it makes and if it is because in abroad the release pattern is very different. Here we release a movie and if it runs, it keeps on running, <laughs> okay. we do not interfere. There they, uh, yeah, they book theatres for a particular period and then it runs, it does well, even then it has to leave the theatres and it comes back. Okay, so, Oscars mean they can re-release the product, now this time with better visibility. So, that Oscars eventually translate into big money. I mean, uh, there is a famous story, um, are you aware of an actress called Ellen Burstein, Requiem for a Dream? Yeah, She won an Academy Award for which movie? Alice does not live here anymore, directed by Martin Scorsese, his second major movie. Now, uh, uh, she could not for some reason attend the ceremony and uh, one of the presenters personally went to give her the statuette and she says, uh, how does it really matter? And he say, the presenter, the person uh, a big leading man, he had gone to her house to gift her the award and he said, see when you die, your obituary will read as the academy winning actor Ellen Bernstein died on so and so day. So, that is the difference it makes, otherwise you are just an actor, um, but when you win the academy award, you become the academy award winning actress. Okay. So, it's, it's, it means something, it is very prestigious, people hanker after it it influences a star's commercial prospect. L yesterday while talking about Coppola, we uh, did note that uh, one reason why Paramount could not kick him out unceremoniously was because he won a, the Oscar for the best screenplay for Patton. Yeah. That was one reason why he could just hang on by the skin of his teeth. Okay. 
reasons other than a studio politics, age and image of the recipient, we are basically talking about directors, uh, male and female actors. So, age and image of the recipients. Remember Christopher Plum, uh, Plummer, when did he win the Oscar? 2012, right? In which he plays Evan McGregor's father, the beginners. Okay, and he's a dying patriarch of this particular family. And how old is uh, Christopher Plummer today? Some 84, 85. So that means that means that he won his first ever Oscar. Yeah, the star of Sound of Music. <laughs> okay, and he must have given several blockbusters along the way. But age matters, and they must, uh, the Academy must have finally realized that this is. <laughs> If it does not happen now, it may not happen ever. So, age and image matter. Image of an actor is extremely important and we will see. Previous track record, yes, things do matter. And what do we understand by previous track record? Al Pacino, <laughs> yes, Scent of a Woman was his eighth nomination. Okay. And after what? Sir Pico. Uh, the Godfather Part One and Part Two, uh, Dog Day Afternoon. Okay, so uh, you can't cannot better that kind of body of work. But he got his Oscar when he was nominated the eighth time. Sympathy factors. Give me some example. What could what what is sympathy factor? Yeah. Oh well, that was a great performance. But of course. Uh, sympathy must have a role to play there. Yes, um, one of the greatest examples that we are often given is how Elizabeth Taylor won her first Academy Award. For, the second was for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. The first was for her role as a call girl in Butterfield Eight. Now, um, many f people feel that uh, she had done a better job in several of her previous films. Okay, but by the time of Butterfield 8, there were rumors that she is going to die of cancer <laughs> and that she is being treated um, for something very fatal. And the academy must have thought, okay, a beautiful woman dying much before her time, so why not. Okay. And then she came and she received her Oscar and collapsed in the arms of her then husband. Her, husband number 4, Eddie Fisher. And soon after that, she dumped him and married Richard Burton okay. and then married him again. So, that is, yeah. So, sympathy factors do matter. Uh, we were talking about age and image and previous track record. Look at Martin Scorsese, why go far? When did he win? 2006 for The Departed. Okay. Um, the man who had made Mean Streets, Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, Goodfellas. Many people felt that he should have got the award for the Goodfellas, but then he did not get it in 89, he got it in 2006. For a work which was a remake yeah, of Infernal Affairs. Hmm? Popularity with the industry and goodwill with the industry people is another important factor. And there are some people, uh, nice regular all American guys like Tom Hanks, okay, they are popular, they are nice guys. Okay. Clint Eastwood always gets an honorable mention. Yeah. So, they are the guys who matter, they are popular and they have led more or less a nice, uh, a respectable, uh, at least on the surface okay, kind of life. So, that matters, goodwill matters. Box of his bankability. Now, this is extremely important. An actor has to be bankable. A director has to be there. Their movies have to earn money. Otherwise, it does not mean anything to the academy. Yeah. It just means lot of effort, lot of money, lot of investment gone waste because for an un, uh, one off thing and we give it to someone who has never made it big, who is, ne who is never going to make it big just a fluke performance, brilliant performance, give him the Oscar. 
uh, but uh, you know it does not work like that. There has to be box office bankability for that. Time of the release, this is very interesting. Christmas is supposed uh, to be the best season because the film remains and when is the Oscar season? February, March and if you release your movie during the Christmas season, more and more people, you get more footfalls in the theatres, okay. holiday season, everyone wants to go out, people watch movies and it remains fresh in everyone's mind for the Oscar season. There are innumerable honorable examples where the movies got lost because the uh, timing of the release was all wrong. They released their movies in April or May by next year February, it is all forgotten. Yeah. Someone who has a very spectacular debut, the hope, like even knowledge that they will come up with some mm -hmm. good work. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that happens. For example, Roman Holiday. Okay. Audrey Hepburn. So she, the moment she made her debut, she was seen as this actor who is going to make it big. But then remember, Roman Holiday was directed by who? William Wyler, one of the most bankable directors ever. Okay, he has a track record. That reminds me, I am going to ask, I gave you homework, Robert Town, if you did some research. And who did she star with? Gregory Peck. So, you see, there was questioning. So, there has to be. So, that means major bankable studios, actors and directors are lending their support to this young lady. And if we give her an Oscar today, fine, you know, we do look good. And it is also a very safe bet, because she is being backed up by these people. Okay, she is not making some small debut in some art house uh, cinema, okay, which no one is going to ever watch and she is never going to make it big. Now, notable losers round, but you can go on adding to this list, there are too many notable losers. How green uh, was my valley won instead of citizen Kane, the best picture, we have already talked about the unfortunate Mr. Orson Welles. Okay. The only good thing I think uh, personally that came out of his Hollywood stint um, would have been his marriage to Rita Hayworth. He was married to the glamour queen of those times. Okay. In the heat of the night beat Bonnie and Clyde and now no one remembers in the heat of the night today, Bonnie and Clyde is iconic movie. Scorsese is taxi driver was completely ignored, even the actor was not <laughs> recognized. But the actor uh, has been more fortunate than others, because he got his first Oscar pretty early in his career. Out of Africa won over Spielberg's The Color Purple and Spielberg was extremely unhappy. He has been working with uh, sharks and <laughs> all kinds of uh, evil monsters, raiders of the and Indiana Jones, etcetera. Okay, and then he felt that color purple, which is all about gender inequality, racism in America, based on a novel by Alice Walker. Yes, it respectable material. It deserved an Oscar. He was a bankable director. He had a proven track record, but it didn't. So, good fellas, of course. Hitchcock never won an award and he was just uh, tossed a bone called lifetime achievement award and he gave the shortest ever speech you know on the stage. What was it? Thank you. <laughs> okay, that is all he said. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin lifetime achievement award again the same year when the godfather was given all its awards. So, um, Richard Burton, the great Richard Burton, nominated seven times, never won. Okay. And uh, let me tell you, if you look up Richard Burton, he is one of the greatest, greatest ever anywhere in the world. He can easily rank alongside Marlon Brando and Lawrence Olivier, okay. Richard Burton, but never. Peter O'Toole, never. Okay, so, <laughs> life that brings us to the idea of lifetime achievement awards which is pretty uh, uh, much evident in even our system. Okay. We know that they are bankable, they, we know they are hugely popular with the masses, right. But uh, uh, we do not want, we have this infradic attitude towards these people. 
So, let us not give, uh, give them a very popular award. Has Govinda ever won? Maybe debut, but look it up. Do you think how many of you feel that Govinda is a good actor? <laughs> Nobody feels that Govinda is a good actor? No? Seriously? Okay. I think Govinda is a very good actor. Okay. You give him a role and he delivers. Okay. But, he, but you see, we have an attitude towards certain people. They come from this kind of a background. They do a certain kind of films. They do not speak the way we want them to speak, the, perhaps. All these things do matter. So, perhaps those who cannot get the mainstream awards, they are given uh, generally a lifetime achievement award. Hitchcocks, Chaplins, many more. In our own situation also you can see when we cannot give an award to someone, we give the uh, a lifetime achievement award. So, history of all the Oscar awards. It was Louis B. Mayer who established and introduced the idea of having popular awards. It was like bunch of people coming together and petting each other or petting themselves on the backs. <laughs> Very wealthy people and they feel okay, it is not enough to earn enough money, but we also need some token of appreciation for our art. So, let us give these awards to each other. So, that was the attitude and funnily enough, um, the first ever Academy Awards were announced beforehand that X, Y, Z is going to win, please come and attend the party. So, we uh, people knew beforehand, it was not like all hyped and suspense was not built up the way it is done today. The first ever Academy Awards, so again this is a date, his, you should know it if, as a students of film history, May 16, 1929. Why it was called Oscars, several versions about float about it. The first acting award was given to a German actor, Emil Jennings, okay, for a movie called The Way of All Flesh, based on whose novel? Samuel Butler. <coughs> hmm? Janet Gaynor was first female actor and she was awarded for her body of work during the same year. One of the her, one of her famous movies was Seventh heaven. Those were the pre-television days, publicity and visibility was not that massive. Winners were announced beforehand. However, William Randolph Hearst, we never get over this guy. We have already discussed him in Citizen Kane. Yeah. So, he is the man who owned several newspapers and magazines and he felt that look, this is a, a tremendous opportunity for garner, garnering publicity for his papers, glamorizing news, sensationalizing news and hyping up the whole thing, there is money here. Um, he was also on very friendly terms with several female actors and he felt this is a very good way of promoting them, okay, one of his protégés. Okay. So, he did his level best to make the Oscar the most sought after prizes and therefore, the hype. So, uh, any questions, any comments you want to make? Before we go and we, I am going to do a case study of my left foot, Daniel De Lewis, who won, and uh, I am betting on my De, and Daniel De Lewis this year as well, and he has already won um, in 2007 or uh, 2008. He won the Academy for second uh, perform uh, for uh, yet another performance. There will be blood. Paul Thomas Anderson. Now Paul Thomas Anderson's The Master is also one of the nominated films. Argo is a strong contender okay, and all those people who have acted in I am still betting on Daniel De Lewis, Lincoln. So, that, so, uh, uh, that makes me hark back to my left foot 1989 and uh, it is often called the year the academy got it almost right. Many preconceived notions, many of the attitudes, prejudices, misgivings were dispelled. Box office bankability, mm, yes, we are going to look at it, who are his content, who are his rivals and that will give you enough idea and how, why we often say this was the year when the academy got it right. So, nominees for the best picture that year, let us look at the best picture. Driving Miss Daisy, Warner Brothers, born on the 4th of July, 
starring you know who, Universal Pictures, Dead Poets Society, Robin Williams, Touchstone, Field of Dreams, Universal and My Left Foot, uh, Granada, a lesser known studio, but distributed uh, worldwide by Miramax. Best actor, who won it that year? Jessica Tandy, Driving Miss Daisy, uh, Isabella uh, Adiani, the then companion of Daniel De Lewis. She too was uh, the beautiful Isabella Adiani was also nominated for Camille. Jessica Lange for Music Box, Michelle Pfeiffer, another in unfortunate uh, actor who has never won it. Okay, Johnny Depp. Okay. The Fabulous Baker Boys and uh, Shirley Valentine, Paul and Keel. Best Actor Male, Kenneth Branagh, Henry V, Shakespearean and British. Okay. So, two uh, things for which uh, the academy members always had a soft spot for British and Shakespeare. <laughs> okay. You know that gives you the snob value. Robin Williams, Dead Poet Society, another is he is an academician, to serve with love kind of movie, right. So, it is always, it touches a chord with the members, very sentimental mushy movie. Uh, Morgan Freeman, tremendous actor, tremendous performance for driving Miss Daisy, also the fact that he was black and age, okay. he has been acting for quite a while. Tom Cruise, born on the 4th of July box of his bankability, popularity, think of what he had done before that, top gun, cocktail and days of thunder, all money spinners. Hmm? Daniel De Lewis, my left foot. Now, <laughs> well, this is the backdrop, uh, golden globes and BAFTA often give an indication of what is going to happen. This year Argo has elbowed out several films and therefore, chances of uh, Argo getting Golden Globes are pretty high, but not always, it does not always work that way, but it gives you uh, a rough picture. So, born on 4th of July, uh, and, uh, Tom Cruise had already won the Glo Golden Globe Award for playing a paralyzed Vietnam veteran, Ron Kovic, based on a true story. So, you look at it, it is a war movie, it is Oliver Stone movie and Tom Cruise playing it and what is he playing? A paralyzed Vietnam hero, okay. all pluses. Daniel Day Lewis won the New York Critics Circle, the LA Critics Award and the National Society of Film Critics. We are talking about the canon, these are the canon forming bodies. Okay. Uh, My Left Foot is also a biopic of a paralyzed Irish poet and painter. Christy Brown, again a real life story, again paralyzed. So, it was billed as the battle of the wheelchairs, <laughs> Day Lewis versus Tom Cruise. So, battle of the wheelchairs, born on the 4th of July. Now, look at the pluses again, it is an anti-war film, almost like the deer hunter and uh, all that Oliver Stone trilogy, platoon etcetera. Uh, it is an Oliver Stone movie, who was extremely, extremely hot during those days, he could do nothing wrong. It is part of his Vietnam trilogy, Plat Platoon and Heaven and Earth. Vietnam is a popular theme with the academy and its members. It was a huge commercial and critical success, Oliver Stone won the Oscar for the best director that year and of course, the Tom Cruise factor. And of course, Ma Morgan Freeman could not be ignored, widely respected and senior. Okay, so, those are the things, the age matters, experience matters. And Driving Miss Daisy, uh, it won the best Oscar uh, for the best picture and also for the best actor, Jessica Tendi, the 80 year old leading lady. PR machinery, the, public, uh, the public relations machinery for the academy, the bigger the studio, we are talking about that universal studio versus Grenada. So, better are the chances when it is bagged, the movie is bagged by a bigger studio 
uh, big pictures gain more visibility and the academy voters tend to watch more of high profile movies than obscure little movies like my left foot. So, the movie in spite of its brilliance did not stand much of a chance, it was a small budget modest movie, Irish movie made independently, it, was, it's, it belongs to a category of so called indie cinema, okay, independent cinema, not backed by studios, okay. financed by studios, yes distributed, but not fully backed by uh, studios. May actors, produ uh, actors, producers, directors, they, have, they all have to pitch in for their own, with their own funds, etcetera. Most people were not even aware of the existence of this movie. The producers of My Left Foot mailed several thousand video cassettes, those were the days of the video cassette, to the academy's voting members, and of course, it was marketed by Miramax, so it improved its chances. A uh, word about Daniel Day Lewis today he is a legend, but then, then he was still not a very well known uh, actor, a British actor of Irish ancestry. He is uh, the son of the famous poet Cecil Day Lewis, who was also a poet laureate at one point. He lived in Ireland, he has done plenty of theatre. So, he was a trained actor, a method actor, that is very important to remember. How method actor Tom Cruise flamboyant and charismatic is not a trained actor. Day Lewis is a very serious and trained method actor. Uh, his previous work and they are now, this is important to note, My Beautiful Laundrette directed by, based on a play by Hanif Qureshi and directed by Stephen Frears, who later directed The Queen if you remember Helen Mirren's Dangerous Liaison, okay, it's that great is Stephen Frears. And Daniel Day Lewis had also acted in Milan Kundera's The Unbearable Lightness of Being, a very difficult role, Zack Doctor and E. M. Foster's A Room with a View, directed by Merchant Ivory, Ismail Merchant James Ivory. So, look at his body of work and a range. So, the only three movies not blockbusters, but which sufficiently displayed the actor's tremendous versatility. What was his method? Uh, it is about uh, a painter and the writer Christy Brown, who is completely paralyzed. He suffers from a, an ailment called cerebral palsy. The only part of his body that functions is his left foot. Okay. So, Day Lewis went through tremendous preparation for that role. He remained in a wheelchair throughout the shooting of the movie okay, and would act uh, as irascible as the real Christy Brown would be. Because see, you look at the circumstances and you understand the moods, the temper, the mercurial uh, temperament of the man and he ma maintained, he also maintained Brown's paralytic speech at all times. because. He, his affliction was so severe, it had affected every part of his body. He was barely able to speak and only people who were extremely close to him could understand, could, could comprehend what he actually uh, said. Um, Day Lewis also practiced painting and writing with his left foot and that has become the hallmark of all Day Lewis's films, when he did uh, the gangs of New York. He trained as a butcher somewhere okay, for several months. Uh, sorry about gang to New York, apparently he got pneumonia on the set yeah. and uh, he refused to take penicillin because uh, at that point of time in 1920s New York there was no penicillin. So, he, he did not want to go through, yeah that is method going too far. He had to beg him to take Yeah, <laughs> okay. So, uh, Day Lewis known for getting inside the mind of the character and he says, one of the things I am most intrigued by and he is talking about his role, Christy Brown is the character's inarticulacy. Christy Brown's struggle was to express himself and that is the thing that I am always attracted to in a part. I have recently written a paper on Day Lewis's method and uh, uh, if you watch all his films and there are very few films, he is very choosy, very picky, very fussy about his films. 
So, uh, the body of work is extremely limited, but uh, versatility is astounding. So, you watch a movie and you find uh, basically he is act, uh, interested in those characters which are essentially inarticulate, unable to express themselves. So, why the Academy Award? Now, Academy voters like British actors, that is a given. Academy voters also like biopics, that is also a given, and there is a method here. See, Desiree, Sergeant York, Patton, Raging Bull, um, Gandhi, Salieri in Amidus, Helen Mirren in The Queen, and Meryl Streep in The Iron Lady, all these are biopics. King's Speech, yes, Colin Firth, King's Speech. Uh, Oscar has a weak, the Academy has a weakness for uh, actors who play uh, or who portray physical or uh, any kind of disability, afflictions, addictions. Think the list is endless, you can always go on adding to the list, but my list of uh, memorable performances include Jack Nicholson in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Marley Matlin in Children of a Lesser God. So, Dustin Hoffman in Rain Man, Pacino in Scent of a Woman, Colin Firth in The King's Speech, and Christian Bale in The Fighter. He is an addict. Okay. And goes totally against the type. I mean, one year you have watched him in The Dark Knight, and next, the other, next year you are watching him as you know, uh, someone who has transformed himself beyond belief, beyond recognition. So, Christian Bale is another worthy method actor. Uh, the versatility factor of Day Lewis, people under respected him as an actor, although there were only three movies, but people knew that uh, he is a man who can perform, deliver. The difficulty of the role, the role was extremely difficult to perform and a voting member said, I saw him doing something I could not do myself. Okay, he did and who said that? one of the greatest and most beloved leading men of all times, Gregory Peck. He confessed that what he is doing, I can never, what he has done, I can never do. So, uh, Jim Sheridan, the director and Dale Lewis, frequent collaborators, great friends and they have often worked together um, following the astounding success of My Left Foot. They came together again in the name of the father, again a biopic of Jerry Conlon, someone who was wrongly imprisoned for uh, Irish bombing, uh, uh, bombings in a uh, British pub, yeah, IRA factor. And then the boxer, boxer is again about IRA. These are the things that fascinate Sheridan and Day Lewis and uh, being a, you know, uh, having a strong Irish roots, they do frequently this kind of work. So, other works, notable works of Day Lewis, of course, you can keep on adding to the list, but then you have the last of the Mohicans, a blockbuster directed by the, by the great Michael Mann, Scorsese is the age of innocence based on Edith Wharton's book, novel of the same title, co starring Winona Ryder and Michelle Pfeiffer. It won several awards, especially for costumes and art direction. Um, then, he did an adaptation of Arthur Miller's The Crucible and ended up marrying the producer that was Rebecca Miller, Arthur Miller's daughter. Okay. Then, Scorsese's Gangs of New York, which is again a historical and based on a film, uh, sorry, a novel and won his second Oscar for There Will Be Blood which was followed by a lackluster 9, which was uh, a musical adaptation of Fellini's Eight and Half. I want you to look at his movies, The Last of the Mohicans, The Age of Innocence, The Crucible and Gangs of New York, also there will be blood. Now, all these are essentially American characters played by an Irish man, great American heroes great American characters played by a British Irish uh, person. Okay. Th that itself tells you a lot about his range and versatility that uh, when it comes to uh, and then Lincoln of course, <laughs> okay, it does not get more American than 
Lincoln and he gets to play Lincoln, the ultimate American hero. So, starting from uh, Fenimore Cooper's Hawkeye in the last of the Mohicans, which is all about physicality and then Lincoln, which is mo mostly about inward struggle, the typical struggle of a man who is trying to change something around him and his struggle with the society and the struggle within. Okay, so, that and uh, you would be in, uh, perhaps interested to know that uh, in one of the American universities, there is a core module for a film studies course entirely devoted to and it is a core course, Daniel Day Lewis and American history, because his contribution towards understanding of American history is unparalleled. Okay. Uh, as a method actor, now I will quickly summarize what I have been trying to say about method for, since for the past several classes uh, we have been talking about De Niro, Brando, Pacino. So, um, Orson Welles famously said I have always made fun of the method, but I use a lot of things that are taken from it. So, method has something to offer. Originally, <coughs> Uh, it is a, it's a, a contribution by Russian theatre director Stanislavski. So, it was called the Stanislavski method uh, system. In the US, it was basically popularized by the exponents of the group theatre in New York City and uh, later on by people like Lee Strasberg. And Lee Strasberg is almost uh, the godfather of method acting. He has coached the likes of Nicholson, Pacino and Robert De Niro. He has also acted in the godfather, the second part. He is one of the dons and uh, in, uh, in just and justice for all again with Pacino. Pacino always regarded him as a father figure. Stella Adler is another practitioner of method acting. Um, the method is uh, uh, simplistically put, it means that the actor's main responsibility was to be believed, to create a believable character on, uh, on screen on stage. And uh, Stanislavski first employed methods such as emotional memory, draw on from your own past experiences, however painful they are and try to relate them to the to, to whatever is happening uh, or whatever are the demands of the role. To pre prepare for a role that involves fear, for example, the actor must remember something really frightening from their personal lives. An attempt to act the part in the emotional space of that fear they once felt. So, drawing on their memories. Now, this was a clear break from the previous modes of acting that held that the actor's job was to become the character and leave their own emotions behind. Okay, here, they have to draw on from their own personal experiences and this was more demanding, more challenging. Some of the leading practitioners, uh, all time greats, Marilyn Brando, Paul Newman, Monty Clift and James Dean. And if you look at the body of work of these people, you will understand what these actors were all about. Okay. They were not just some uh, good looking act, uh, men trying to enact the role. They were really actors, they were trained in New York, unlike the LA based studio system. And later on of course, we have De Niro, Pacino, Nicholson, Dustin Hoffman, Sean Penn, Mickey Rourke. Uh, Lee Wellman, a regular of Ingmar Bergman, Swedish actor, Emma Thompson, British, Meryl Streep, of course, American, and then uh, more recent, more contemporary, we have Daniel Day Lewis, Nicholas Cage, who was once upon a time a great actor uh, when he won Leaving La Las Vegas, there were sparks. Adrian Brody, of course. Christian Bale, the late great Heath Ledger, Forrest Whitaker and Frank Langella. Frank Langella, a highly respected theatre actor who got his due in cinema much uh, uh, later, 
but is still one of the greatest. Can you ma mention some of his films? Who is Frank Langella? Good. Frost Nixon. He played Nixon too. And who is Frost? Who was Frost? I will give you a clue, the same actor who played Tony Blair in, in the Queen, a shot from my left foot. Okay, so uh, as the title itself would suggest, not too many well-known names, not a big budget pictures, uh, picture, but a tremendous performance by one of the greatest actors of all time. So, uh, watch my left foot, okay, and understand what method acting entails. So, see you tomorrow and you can make an announcement about tomorrow's class.